Hello, my name is Kevin Nicholson. I'm the Director of Therapy Services at Vibra Rehabilitation Hospital in Amarillo. And today I would like to visit with you about the topic of spinal cord injuries and spinal cord disorders. So the first thing we want to talk about is what, ex what actually is a spinal cord injury? To answer that question, it may be helpful to think of the spinal cord as a set of train tracks. Uh, the train tracks carry messages from the brain to the various areas of the body, the arms, the legs, um, and so forth. When something damages those tracks, the message or the signal cannot travel across the damaged area, much like a train cannot travel across busted tracks without wrecking. So. In the, in the case of spinal cord injury, the loss of signals from the brain can lead to a number of problems, such as paralysis or loss of the ability to move arms or legs, or maybe the loss of sensation um, in the arms or the legs. The spinal cord can be directly injured due to trauma, but it can also be damaged by various diseases and disorders that we'll also talk about here today. On television and other media outlets, the most common presentation of spinal cord injury that one will encounter usually involves a traumatic injury. For example, a football player suffers a traumatic event on the field that changes his life uh, from that point on. Or someone's mother or father uh, has a terrible motor vehicle accident due to a drunk driver and they're left paralyzed. Um, while these traumatic types of injuries easily attract the attention of the media, they're really just a small part of the diseases or disorders that can affect the spinal cord. For example, one common disease is multiple sclerosis or MS as it's called. This is a degenerative disorder that affects the nerve fibers in the brain and potentially the spinal cord. It's actually the most common cause of neurological debilitation in the young adult population in the United States. When multiple sclerosis affects the spinal cord, you will see typically various symptoms such as muscle weakness or areas on the arms or legs that are numb or have pain, for example. Once the cause of the spinal cord injury or disorder has been determined and treated, patients are often referred to a rehabilitation facility such as ours in order to relearn many different aspects of their care. If you're interested in more in-depth information about spinal cord injury, there's a very good resource. So you can go to unitedspinal.org to access those resources and publications.